hello everyone. Today we will have the great pleasure to talk to Ali Reza Valley and Suzanne Schnell from the Department of Radiology in Northwestern University in Chicago, Illinois. Their paper is about a semi-automated analysis of 4D flow MRI to assess the hemodynamic impact of intracranial atherosclerotic disease. Hello, my name is Ayrez Ovali. Today I'm going to present our paper, Semi-Automated Analysis of 40 Flow MRI to Assess the Hemodynamic Impact of Intracranial Atherosclerotic Disease, or ICAT. ICAT, as shown in this image, can result in narrowing or blockage of major intracranial arteries due to the accumulation of lipid-based plaques within the vessel wall. It is the second most common cause of ischemic stroke and symptomatic ICAT patients have a high risk of stroke recurrence despite medical therapy. Currently, ICAT is assessed by the degree of stenosis as defined here. Hemodynamic failure is one of the main risk factors for stroke recurrence in ICAT patients and previous studies found that the degree of stenosis does not reflect the hemodynamic significance of the disease, such as flow impairment in the stenotic artery and change in blood flow distribution in cerebral arterial network. In this study, we acquired 4D flow MRI data and developed a semi-automated analysis tool to assess the intracranial hemodynamics and in the, to investigate the impact of ICAT. 4D flow MRI is time-resolved three-dimensional phase contrast MRI with three-directional velocity encoding. We apply the method called dual-wing 4D flow MRI, which provides higher SNR and velocity dynamic range needed for measuring slow and fast flow simultaneously in stenotic arteries. As shown in the sequence diagram, two sets of three-directional velocity data are collected, low-wing and high-wing. The low wank acquisition has high sensitivity to low velocities, but it is limited by velocity aliasing artifact. The high wank acquisition has no aliasing artifact, but it cannot resolve low velocities due to high noise level. In dual wank approach, these two acquisitions are combined into a single data set by using the high wank data to correct aliasing in the low wank data. Using 4D flow MRI, a three-dimensional time-dependent velocity field within the volume of interest can be visualized, as shown in this video, with uh, streamlines colored by the, the velocity magnitude. In addition, hemodynamic quantification can be performed. The semi-automated analysis tool evaluates flow and velocity in the entire cerebral vasculature and provides a comprehensive report of hemodynamic parameters. The steps include uh, segmentation of vasculature as shown in panel A, extraction of center lines for all arterial branches as shown in panel C, and placement of multiple analysis planes per branch perpendicular to the center lines as shown in panel D. At each plane, vessel lumen was segmented automatically as shown in panel E, and the hemodynamic parameters such as flow rate and peak velocity were calculated. A summary report of these parameters was generated at the end of the process as shown in panel F. To assess the local impact of ICAT, pressure drop at the stenosis was calculated using the Bernoulli equation. To evaluate changes in cerebral flow distribution, in ICAT patients, we used flow symmetry ratios as defined here. In this study, 25 healthy controls were gathered, included to establish the baseline for normal flow condition. In addition, flow was evaluated in 16 ICAT patients, including 2 mild, 7 moderate, and 7 severe stenosis patients. The symmetry ratio was defined at vessel level, meaning by comparing between bilateral arteries, as well as at hemisphere level, between the two brain hemispheres. Here, the vessel peak velocity ratio and vessel flow rate ratio for controls demonstrate there was no significant difference in peak velocity and flow rate between right and left arterial branches, with both ratios being close to 1. On the other hand, for ICAT patients with mostly MCA stenosis, it was found that vessel peak velocity ratio and vessel flow rate ratio were significantly different from one in MCA, while the vessel ratios were close to one elsewhere. The second row 
present the symmetry ratio at hemisphere level. Flow rate and peak velocity between two hemispheres were the same for healthy subjects. For ICAT patients, the hemisphere flow rate ratio was close to one, but the peak velocity on the affected side was significantly higher than the non-affected side. The pressure drop at the stenosis is plotted here versus the peak velocity ratio as the global consequence of the lesion. Pressure drop has a significant positive correlation with peak velocity asymmetry in these patients. The data points were colored based on stenosis degree and as it can be seen, pressure drop increases from mild to moderate and severe stenosis. In the figure on the right, we showed that pressure drop was significantly higher in the severe subgroups compared to moderate stenosis patients. As conclusion, this study demonstrated the feasibility of dual wing 4D flow MRI and the semi-automated flow analysis tool for evaluation of ICAT, which enabled uh, analysis of flow distribution and estimation of pressure drop at stenosis. At the end, I would like to thank our collaborator, Eric Schroben. The analysis tool presented in this paper is an extension of Eric's work, which was published in the Journal of Magnetic Resonance Imaging. I would like to appreciate the funding from the American Heart Association and the National Institute of Health. And finally, I would like to thank our team at Northwestern University, especially my mentors, Dr. Schnell, Dr. Markle, and Dr. Ansari for their support. Thank you very much for your attention. Very nice to meet you both. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became involved in MRI? Uh, yeah, the, the, I obtained my PhD in the mechanical engineering with the focus in uh, flu, uh, the computational modeling and the, flu, uh, the measurements with different techniques, uh, some of them optical techniques. Uh, the, in the 2015, I started uh, the working on uh, the patient-specific uh, the CFD modeling of blood flow, uh, the informed by medical imaging. Uh, we used uh, the 4D flow MRI as a method to improve the accuracy of our uh, CFD simulations and also for validation of our result. And then I was fascinated with this uh, the new technique, which is based on MRI, because uh, my background was in particle image velocimetry. I knew how challenging it is to uh, measure flow. Uh, the, and this method was really good, uh, interesting because it could measure flow inside human body. And that was very uh, interesting and intriguing for me. So I decided to the, the join the Department of Radiology at Northwestern University and work with the experts of and medical imaging uh, and flow imaging with MRI. Yeah. Okay, thank you. How about you, Suzanne? Yes, so I started working in MRI way back in 2003, the first time. Uh, it was I was uh, writing on my master's thesis uh, that was back then fMRI in, uh, at the University of Queensland in Bristol. And then I, after that, I ventured out a little bit away from MRI and started working a proper job. <laughs> but, you know, I always thought of how nice it was when I was working with MRI and actually came back uh, to do my PhD. And it was 2006, where I started in, in Freiburg, Germany, in the lab of Jürgen Hennig. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I pretty much stayed in the field of MRI, just changed a little bit from back then DTI and now to 40 flow MRI. Uh, you developed a semi-automated flow analysis pipeline that evaluates the flow and the velocity in the brain's entire vasculature. And I was wondering if you were an open science advocate and if you were considering with Eric Schroben in making your pipeline publicly available for other scientists. Yes, so uh, we haven't really talked about that with Eric, but we do completely agree that that this is something we should actually do. Um, I'm actually currently the secretary of the Flow and Motion Study Group of the ISMM. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the topics that we have high on our list, that we create a, a shared platform so that all ins institutions who work on the same thing shares the tools and, and allows exchange of programs and analysis tools. So, so I will definitely, or we will definitely approach Eric 
suggest that our program changed uh, pretty much changed dramatically compared to what uh, Eric had done before us. So, and I think he will agree because he, he also gave it to us. So this is definitely something we, we will do and, and allow that other researchers can actually use the same tools. What would you like to say to other scientists wishing to use your pipeline? Uh, what they should be cautious about? Um, I would uh, just uh, say that uh, it, like any other post-processing in, uh, in medical imaging, the quality play uh, an important role, the quality of images, uh, the inaccuracy of the analysis. So, uh, the, and, uh, so if they have the poor quality uh, images to start with, so the, the analysis is not going to be really uh, the good uh, final result. So, uh, the imaging technique should be uh, the um, advancement of the, the imaging technique and the post-processing should go hands to hand so that it should be high quality image to start with the from. And uh, one more thing that was very challenging for me uh, the, in this workflow was the segmentation of vasculature, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 uh, which is very important and actually has a significant uh, uh, effect on the accuracy of flow analysis. Uh, we, were the, the, we took an approach of uh, multimodality in medical imaging. So we get the combined time of flight MRI with 40 flow MRI and we did, uh, try to uh, the, the Im improve the segmentation by this method. But we have to note that, this, that the, these images usually are uh, acquired on different uh, special resolutions. So uh, there is something, some kind of uh, difference between these images and they de definitely doesn't don't match exactly so okay, and i believe the segmentation is the area that it can still be improved by using more advanced algorithms would you like to add something yes so uh i think that even though our tools are as automated as possible uh it is always important that the researcher who works with these tools inspects the result and if, if data quality, as Ali has already mentioned, is, is not uh, very good, you actually have to go in and manually correct the results. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think in general, when you use automated tools, I would always say you always have to go in afterwards and manually inspect the result. Um, and then also the other important thing is that uh, this this tool is pretty much the second tool in the pipeline, as I mentioned before. For the flow data, always has to be first to go first through a pre-processing step. So it has to first be corrected for noise, for any currents, and uh, if if necessary for anti-aliasing for aliasing. So this is a step that has to be done before that, and after that, you can uh, start using this um, semi-automatic tool. So you applied your analysis tool to characterize the hemodynamic impact of intracranial atherosclerotic disease. Were you surprised by the pressure drop result between patients with severe and moderate, moderate stenosis? I have to say that I actually was, uh, was surprised uh, because the results were, uh, were very distinct and I did not expect that. Mm -hmm. um, especially since we use uh, Benui, which, is, which uses a lot of assumptions. Uh, that we are actually not fulfilling. Um, I was very surprised by how close the CFT simulations were with Bernoulli at the end. So yeah, we were very lucky to, to see that. Uh, so yeah, we got the, I agree. So we got the, the, you know, coming back, uh, coming from the, uh, the mechanical engineering ba the background, uh, at the beginning, I was not sure if this method, uh, because it's simple, uh, that can be used for uh, distinguishing the, the, the patient with different level of disease. And uh, so we decided to, do the, to examine our method uh, in flow phantoms and uh, against computational fluid dynamics, so, with, uh, so more advanced technique for uh, pressure the drop calculation. And uh, I was uh, also surprised that this method could, uh, uh, is sensitive to different flow rate and uh, degree of stenosis as we presented in the paper. So uh, if knowing this sensitivity now, 
simplicity of this, uh, the method can be advantageous because in the middle clinical application, we want uh, the, to resolve very quickly and uh, the having a simple uh, the method that is sensitive, uh, there can be a very good uh, way of doing this kind of analysis quickly without uh, need of computation of fluid dynamics, which, which can take a long time. Yeah. So what's the next step of this work now? Uh, so so far, uh, the, the, this analysis uh, the tool has been validated with experimental uh, uh, data. So we use some, as I mentioned, uh, flow, uh, phant flow phantoms and uh, the, the validated this uh, the uh, flow analysis tool. And we also get uh, compare it with uh, the commercial softwares that are more established. So to make sure that this the the, the data that result that coming from this analysis tool actually are accurate and we can get the rely on that. So the, and we had used this, the, the analysis tool for other applications like uh, the Aorda and Lieber. And uh, we want to extend this capability of the program and actually make it more usable in other applications. And uh, the, of course, we want to use the, if we can extend the capability and make it more accurate and more reliable. So we want to use it, as I mentioned, in the clinical uh, the, the studies and uh, the, um, investigate the links between the hemodynamics and uh, the cardiovascular and cerebrovascular disease. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I think the, the main factor really is to, to apply the same kind of approach to the other um, areas in the body, like areas are already mentioned. So pretty much uh, the, the workflow is still pretty complicated in analyzing flow in the liver. Mm -hmm. So the liver would be a very nice uh, field where we also would like to in, investigate disease. But uh, I, so far, for the flow has been applied mostly in the aorta and, and heart. So this is of course then something we would also like to do, even though the workflow there is a little bit easier than in, in the small vessel areas. Mm 